Hello, how are you today? This is Hina from Team Test and I welcome you yet again in my session of question answer discussion to help you with the prestigious examinations of NET, SET and GATE. The book by Bodhi Tree Publication, which we have begun to discuss, is called What, When, Why, How. If you want it, because it contains explanation to every answer and, of course, so many questions, you can contact Tess on the number 93878-39871. Okay, shall we begin with question number one? I'm super excited and I know so you are. Here is question number one. The sonnet sequence, The House of Life, was written by, your options are A, P. B. Shelley, B, Alfred Tennyson, C, D. G. Rossetti, or D, Walter Pater. Question from Victorian era. The House of Life, written by, well, the answer is C, D. G. Rossetti. Now, D. G. Rossetti, as you know, was a Victorian poet and a painter who lived from 1828 to 1882. He founded the seven-membered pre-Raphaelite brotherhood. The aim of this brotherhood was to express nature and true emotions in art. Now, at work, D. G. Rossetti had three inspirations, whom he called his muses. They were, first, his wife, Elizabeth Siddle, second, Fanny Cornforth, and third, Jane Morris. Now, let's talk about the House of Life. It is a complex sequence of poems which trace the physical and spiritual development of an intimate relationship. It's a link between thought and feeling. Now, let's take an example of one poem in the House of Life. It is called Nuptial Sleep. It was actually attacked as an epitome of the fleshly school of poetry because of its eroticism and sensuousness. Okay? Now, you know, actually, Rossetti himself described the House of Life sonnet form as a moment's monument. What does that mean, moment's monument? It means it contains the feelings and meanings of a fleeting moment. Okay? And you should know this, the sonnet sequence, this one, was first published in 1869, in which it consisted only of 16 poems. But later, it was published in the year 1881, and it contained 102 poems as a part of a bigger volume called Ballets and Sonnets. Ballets and Sonnets ke baare mein bhi kabhi aur baat karenge. Okay, let's move on to question number two. Here it is on your screen. The plays of W.B. Yeats were influenced by, your options are A, Indian theater, B, Japanese theater, C, French theater, or D, African theater. W.B. Yeats, two famous plays. The answer is B, Japanese theater. Let me tell you a little bit about what Japanese theater? It's called no theater, N-O-H. Now, Japanese no theater influenced modernist literature. Yeats was introduced to No by two of his friends, Isra Pound and Ernest Penelosa. Okay. And he actually borrowed the structural elements of his works from No, in which plays I have written the names at the Hawkswell, published 1917, and the Death of Kukulin, published 1939. Okay. Let's read a little bit about characteristics of traditional No plays in Japan. Okay. First, they had strange intimacy. Second, 30 minutes to an hour and a half in length. Third, the stage was bare with a plain black drop, backdrop. Fourth, the actors wore masks or makeup that appeared to be masks to create a sense of illusion and intense absurdity. And fifth, the actors spoke in a haunting chant. Now, Yates borrowed all this, and with this, he established a strange intimacy in his plays. Okay? Now, just a trivia, there were two other Western writers who were influenced by no theater. Do you know their names? First is Berthold Bratchett. Very good. And second is Eugene O'Neill. You got it. This takes us to question number three. The Turn of the Screw by Henry James is a 
Your options are A, ghost story, B, detective story, C, comic story, or D, love story. The turn of the screw. It is a option A, ghost story. Now, Let's talk a little bit about Henry James. He was an American British author who lived from 1843 to 1916. 1916, 1-6, okay. Now by 1890s, James career and health both were dwindling. And in a letter from October 1895, we read he actually wrote, I see ghosts everywhere. And maybe that is the reason Henry James wrote so many ghost stories. One of them is The Turn of the Screw. It is a gothic as well as a horror fiction. This novella was first published serially in an American magazine named Collier's Weekly. Okay, now a few points about The Turn of the Screw. It employs a frame narrative technique, which means there are multiple narrators. The first one is an unnamed narrator who recounts the story of a group of guests telling stories to each other on Christmas Eve. One of the guests is Douglas, the second narrator. He tells the story of a governess who cares for two children, Flora and Miles. This brings us to the third narrator, who is the governess herself. She continues the novella from her perspective. Okay, I will tell you a little bit about the novella with the characters, okay, here. Now, the first character is important, is governess. She is employed by Flora and Miles' uncle to take care of these children at a country house in Bly. Second character is Flora. She's a young orphan girl who never got the care of a mother. Before this governess, she was taken care of by another governess named Miss Jessel, who is dead now, okay? Now, the governess actually sees Miss Jessel's ghosts here and there. And she has a feeling that Flora sees the ghost too. Now, there is a time when the governess asks Flora that, do you see the ghost of Miss Jessel? Did you see her around the lake? And this makes Flora so scared. She gets fever. And this makes, you know, the governess send her away to her uncle in London. Right? Now, the third major character is Miles. Miles is Flora's brother. He's expelled from his school for a mysterious reason. But according to the governess, Miles is a well-mannered child, okay, and intelligent. But at the end of this novella, what happens? You should know this. There's a time when the governess sees the ghost of another dead servant called Peter Quint. So at that time, she tries to shield Miles from Peter's Quinn because somehow she feels that the ghosts are controlling Flora and Miles. She wants to tell Miles that, you know, he's no longer controlled by the ghosts. But when she tells this to him, she finds that Miles is already dead. Lying in her arms, Miles is dead. The turn of the screw blurs the distinction between reality and fantasy. It is an ambiguous novella. Why? Because we do not, do not know what is the truth. Are there really ghosts here? Or is it just the governor, you know, is it just the governess's hallucination? We don't know. And that is why this is a favorite text of academics of new criticism. Okay, right? Can we move on to the next question? Question number four on your screen. This is from Indian literature, Dalit literature. Who advocated a Dalitization of Indian culture in Why I Am Not a Hindu? Your options are A. Sharan Kumar Limbale, B. B. R. Ambedkar, C. Kacha Ilaya, or D. Babu Rao Bagul. Who has written Why I Am Not a Hindu? The answer is C. Kacha Ilaya Shepherd. Well, he's born in 1952, an Indian writer, a Dalit right activist. He himself is not a Dalit, but he works for their rights. He lives in Telangana and his father was a shepherd. That is why he took this suffix shepherd in his name. Okay. 
Now his other important books are, you should know their names, that will be enough. Look at the screen. God as Political Philosopher, Buddha's Challenge to Brahminism. The second work is A Hollow Shell. Third, The State and Repressive Culture. Fourth, Manatatvam, which is in Telugu. And fifth is Buffalo Nationalism, a critique of spiritual fascism. Okay? And this takes us to the last question of the day. Squire Allworthy is a country gentleman who appears in. Your options are A. Tristram Shandy, B. Oliver Twist, C. Tom Jones, or D. Jane Ayer. Tell me, Squire Allworthy, he appears in? Well, the answer is C. The full name I've given you. The History of Tom Jones, a Foundling. 1749 novel by Henry Fielding. Now, it is a comic, a Bildungsroman, and a Picarus novel. Why? Why a Bildungsroman? Because it focuses on the psychological and moral growth of the protagonist, who is Tom himself. And it is called a Picarus novel because Tom is a roguish character. Although at the end, he does realize his love for the virtuous Sophia Western, and both of them marry. Now, let's come to the question. Squire Allworthy is a wealthy country gentleman. He's Tom's garden because one day when he returned from a trip, he saw a little baby boy lying down on his bed. Okay. Nobody knows who his parents are. That is why he's a foundling. So, Squire Allworthy decides to take care of this boy, names him Thomas, in short, Tom. And Tom is given a very cordial atmosphere to grow. Okay, but then there is a time when he is banished from this house because of a misunderstanding. And during that time, he experiences a lot of adventures, okay, a lot of experiences. But in the end, everything becomes well, and it is revealed that he is actually the son of Squire Allworthy's sister, Bridget. So in that way, he is the nephew of the squire and an heir to his will cool enough now the major characters in this novel are i've written them squire western okay she's the virtuous lady virtuous girl mrs bridget allworthy bliffle she is the sister of squire allworthy and the wife of bliffle then there's molly seagram black george seagram benjamin partridge and mrs jenny jones or mrs waters who's a very cunning character done we are done i hope you liked today's session and as i've told you the book we are doing is what when why how a book of multiple choice question answers by our dear kalyani ma'am in bodhi tree publication if you want it you can contact us on 9387839871 and if you want an online course with ma'am you can call us on the same number I have to tell you something important from tomorrow we are going to start with a new series of question answers obviously to help you with the exams but then it will be related to something else to know you must come here on this channel tomorrow thank you so much for watching this is Hina from team test bye bye